So, okay. Here with Washington State women's basketball head coach, Cami Etheridge. Coach, your team hits the road again this week to play two top 25 opponents in the Rocky Mountains. Your first stops in Boulder, Colorado, where you take on number 25, Colorado. Then on Sunday, you head over to Salt Lake City to take on number seven, Utah. How's your team preparing for a top 25 matchup this weekend? Well, again, just uh, excited about the chance to be playing. You know, we scratched and clawed our way back to, to 500 in the league. Um, you know, and, and going on the road. And we've been very good on the road. So I, I like the fact that our team has responded well and seemed to we seem to focus well and seem to do a good job on the road. So we're going to need that and more when we face, uh, um, you know, the altitude and, and the mountain schools uh, with Colorado and Utah coming up. But obviously our team is excited to get going and, and uh, excited to play these two games. If you have any questions for Coach Etheridge, please raise your hand and we'll get it in. Uh, Coach, uh, uh, we'll go uh, Sam Taylor here with the Daily Evergreen. Go ahead, Sam. <coughs> um, so with my first question kind of relates to the last time you met, met, met this team, Colorado and Utah, of course, they got the upper hand. Um, how has, obviously, that was without Shirley's, but how has your team grown in the month since you last faced these mountain schools? Yeah, I mean, um, that's a great question. Um, you know, I didn't really like how we played against. I just didn't think we had the energy or passion against Colorado. I thought we maybe emotionally just just played so well against Utah and came back in that game, and we were a little flat against Colorado. And you just can't be. They're 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 just Colorado's long. Um, they're physical. They they're def they defend. Um, you know, they're getting to the point where like four or five players are in double figures. So. A um, lot of weapons and a lot of things you have to deal with, and and um, you know I feel like uh, if anything, you know we're we're we we've, we've kind of reestablished ourselves defensively. Even at that point, we guarded Utah pretty good. We guarded pretty good, and we have since then. Um, we got a rebound at a high level. I think we're doing a little bit better job of doing that. Those are things that I think we've we've sustained and 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 gotten a little bit better at. And I think the question mark for us is, can we keep growing offensively and, you know, feel really good about how some of the things we did in, in the Cal game, especially responding from not playing well against Stanford. Um, and we've got to have great ball movement and, and, um, and better execution on the offensive end. And, and I, I really do think we have a chance to, to really continue to work on that and, and continue to grow in that area. Um, uh, we're going to need that because you got to put points on the boards against uh, the top teams in this league, and we're about to face quite a few of them. Awesome. And then these questions are kind of more angled towards Bella Mercatete and her role on the team. How has how have you seen her? Um, how have you seen Mercatete grow this year? You know, I, I I have such high hopes for Bella every single game. She's dynamic. She's explosive. Obviously, athletic. Um, you know, I think she should be a double-double every game. And I think she's had a little bit of consistency problem. And that's not her fault. It's really been our offense. Offensively, we've been a little inconsistent. Um, we have to get her in spots on the floor where, you know, she's not easily double teamed. Um, you know, I think we put her in some bad spots. And those are things that we're trying to fix and, and improve on. Um, and I think she's, she's really focused in on, uh, you know, playing – uh, you know, just being just a big presence in the post and being aggressive offensively and not overthinking it. I think she gets into trouble when she tries to predetermine her move, uh, but she's explosive. She needs to trust her instinct. She needs to trust her um, her quick turn, jump hook, or whatever that that uh, that move might be. Uh, but but Bella is a dynamic player for us, and we need. Honestly, I keep saying it. She needs to be a double double every night, and and she's got to get on the boards to get some of those points, get on the boards to get double double figures there. And um, I think if we can if we can keep getting her to that level, it's going to make everybody else's job on the court easier. How can you help her accomplish that double double? You spoke about the spots on the floor. What goes into helping her play her best? Well, I think first, I think she she's slipped a little bit about going to the boards. You know, sometimes off. Sometimes when you struggle scoring and, and you're not getting your shots or their people are making it hard, well, go get something easy on an offensive putback. 
And um, but you're never going to get those if you're already leaking out and going back on the defensive class. And there have been moments she's been phenomenal at that. And that gets you started. All of a sudden you get two, you know, two baskets easy because you just went to the boards and, and you know, you're big and you could finish those. Uh, it gets people in foul trouble. So, you know, I think just the intent of, of putting herself in more plays by going to the offensive glass, um, being so, uh, you know, intentional about boxing her guy out. She's about to play Von Lay. Von Lay is a great offensive rebounder. Peely is a great offensive rebounder. I mean, these are two teams that if you don't physically go put a body on them, they're going to kill you on the board. So just the intent, the intent of really putting herself in position to be able to make those plays on the glass She'll be in many, many positions. She can get way more than 10 if she just puts herself in those positions a little bit more. Offensively, you know, I think she's 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 uh, held onto the ball a little too long on her post moves. It, people are coming on the dribble and she's wanting to take two and three dribbles. And, you know, quite frankly, she might only get one. And she's got to make quicker decisions when she catches and, um, and, and stay explosive and Again, I think uh, if she does that a little bit better, I think the good things will happen for her. Awesome. And the, the team seems to be really close with, with each other and getting to get along well. Um, what role does Bella play in the team chemistry? Well, uh, Bella is, um, you know, she's, she's like, you know, when she smiles, the room lights up. You know, when she enters the room, um, there's a big presence. Uh, she's really engaging. She's got, she's got, you know, great chemistry with our team. Uh, she's playful. She smiles easy. She laughs at herself easy. She, she's uh, got a great sense of humor. Um, you know, so, you know, you know, but, but with all of that comes a little bit of a, you know, I think Bella carries her, feelings on her sleeve a little bit. And so emotionally, if she gets down a little bit, she, 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 her energy kind of comes down a little bit. So, you know, she's got to grow in that area because our team our, and our team has to be able to pick each other up. And, and that's the beauty of this group is, is that we know each other really well. And, um, you know, she can count on and she can depend on, you know, the maturity and the leadership of, of Ula and, and Charlize, for example, um, you know, and everybody taking care of each other when we have our bad moments and, and, and then obviously um, bringing the best out of each other uh, on and off the court. And I think that's what's really fun to watch with this team is they really do. They really do bring out the best in each other and they take care of each other on and off the court. So, you know, Bell is a big part of that. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's an area that we can't ever be good enough at. We've got to keep working on that to continue to have great chemistry. Thanks, Coach. Good luck this week. Thank you. Hey, Coach, can you hear me? I can. All right, it's Andrew from Krim2. Uh, I just wanted to ask you about Charlize. Uh, she becomes the first Coug to ever be a midseason finalist for the Naismith Trophy. Obviously, a huge accomplishment for her. We've seen her throughout these three years, uh, obviously, be a dynamic scorer. But even with missing the 25 days that she has this year, what ha what about this season has stuck out to you in terms of her growth and being able to get to this spot that no other Coug has ever gotten to in history? What a great question and, and just congratulations to Charlize. Again, I know she'll look at that and go, you know, mid-season or preseason award or recognition probably doesn't amount to too much. But when you're talking about the wooden award and 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 you know that's that's big and only 10 players. I mean, and again, the first first uh coup to ever do something like that. That's an amazing uh, accomplishment. And it's because of her stats and her consistency this year that she's, you know, that she's on that list. Um, I think people are recognizing. I think her shooting percentage has shot up compared to what it was a year ago. Um, and honestly, when people really study her game, you'll see a, a player that plays both sides of the ball as good as anyone in the country. Um, you know, really proud of her. What stands out to me is that, that you know, we've seen it coming. I, I think our staff and 
<clears throat> we watched Char Charlisa uh, put in the time, the specific time, the individual time with us this summer, the hours and hours and hours that she spent on her shot, on her individual game and doing some things that we, we really challenged her to work on, her conditioning level, all of those things that we just feel are playing a big part in why she's playing at such a high level. And, you know, now she's gonna get in a great rhythm, we think, uh, as we go through February and she's back with us and she's, she's back in her routine. And I think you're going to see her put together a, a great end of the season. And speaking specifically of that game against Utah coming up uh, in the second quarter, in that first game, you played them, you guys had a ton of turnovers. They held you to just seven points. Uh, but the second half was an entirely different story. You guys outscored them, I think by 11 points, just, what what is something you can take from that second half, especially with having Charlize back for this time around, that could really help get you guys going on the right foot right away against them this time around? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting because everybody will make a few adjustments and, and you watch that film and you figure out, yeah, we, we did great guarding them this way. And then you can rest assured they're going to have an answer for that. And uh I just thought we had great ball move, movement. Um, we quit turning the ball over. Again, you just can't turn the ball over against Utah or any good team. They, they already score easily uh, and they get to 70 and 80 all the time. So you just can't give them easy possessions. I think that's still key for us. We, When we don't turn it over, when we have some good assist numbers to our turnovers, uh, that's when we're at our best. Um, clearly you, you put a, a offensive talent like Charlie's back on the court. I think we have a chance to continue to really grow offensively. I think we're, we're getting into a pretty good rhythm now of understand what we're trying to do. And I think honestly, you know, you put her back on the defensive end of the floor and, and we become a, a, a much better defensive team. So, um, the Charlie's effect, I think is real. I think it makes us a better team, but, uh, you know, Utah is um, is an amazing uh, machine. You know, they really have a system that works. They have people that can stretch you and, and shoot the three. And then Peely is just, you know, just kind of an unguardable dimension. So uh, we need a lot of bodies and we need a lot of people uh, and our weapons on point. And, and I really like the fact that we're starting to get quality depth and quality uh, production off of the bench. I think those are areas of growth that we need um, and have started to have. Um, and that'll help us um, combat whatever we're going to face against Utah and Colorado. And just one final note, uh, as we come down to, to the end of the season here, as we head toward Vegas, you know, having the five international players in your starting lineup, and you've talked a lot about the need to continue to recruit internationally and how that's really helped uh, build your program to where it is right now. But just as you come down to the end with these five players in particular, just what is it about them? How have they come in from all, you know, all different walks of life, all parts of the world, and they've really become a cohesive unit together um, on this team. Just can you talk a little bit about that? Another great question. I, I, I um, in the world of, of athletics now where NIL and, you know, people are trying to get deals and there's money for this one and not that one and all the things that can, you know, all the imagine, just imagine all the things that can go wrong with, with the dynamic and the chemistry of a team when you have some of those things happening. Uh, I keep going back to there's something a little bit unique for internationals. Um, they look at coming to America and going to universities in America as just the most unbelievable opportunity for them. They're really, really appreciative of being here and, and, and they take advantage of the opportunities. They take advantage of the academic side of it. They, they love class for the most part. They, they wanna learn, they wanna know their professors. Uh, they're, not, they're not here you know, they might be here just to ball, you know, uh, and we love that too, but, but they really see this as a, as a life-changing opportunity for them to leave a country and to go to America and, and have this experience. So when you start with, with just grateful people and, and motivated people and mature people, because they've left home and, and, you know, they've taken care of themselves and they have, have a sense of, 
responsibility. Um, you know, you just don't have some of the, the junk that gets in the way um, that I think a lot of, you know, quite frankly, some, some American players and, and top recruits have. So chemistry just seems to go hand in hand with some of this uh, maturity and, and um, you know, just wanting to be a part of a program, of a university, of a team. And, and they just come and they fit in and they, they just, they love it. They love being a Coug, they love Pullman, they love uh, the dynamic of, of, you know, college basketball. And um, again, I think when you start with that, you just, you have the making of, uh, you know, great, great chemistry. And we have that, we believe in that, we think our culture, you know, grows that and develops that. And we hope it's, uh, it's uh, something that is, is that other top recruits, you know, other internationals can look at us and go, I want to be a part of that because I do think it's a special place and we've got something pretty special going on here. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Good luck this week. Thanks a lot. All right, Coach, we'll appreciate your time. Best of luck on the road this weekend. We'll talk to you after Friday's game at Colorado. Until then, go Cougs. Thanks. Go Cougs. <laughs>